It's one of the most famous images in Olympic history. Tommy Smith and John Carlos, fists raised and heads bowed after winning gold and bronze in the 200 meters at Mexico City in 1968. But who were the people behind this dramatic moment? Let's start with the winner, Tommy Smith. Texas born, Smith went to high school in California and then college at San Jose State. And while there broke the world record for the 200 meters with 20 seconds flat in 1966. And he continued to rack up wins, NCAA and AAU championships and Summer Universiad gold before the Mexico City Games. Around this time, the Olympic project for human rights was established by sociologist Harry Edwards, who had also been in San Jose State's athletics team as a discus thrower, along with Smith and another college teammate, John Carlos. The group had advocated a boycott of the Games unless South Africa and Rhodesia were uninvited from the Olympics, Muhammad Ali was restored as boxing's world heavyweight champion, IOC President Avery Brundage stepped down and more African-American assistant coaches were hired. Ali, of course, wasn't awarded his title back and Brundage served for another four years, but South Africa and Rhodesia were effectively excluded. In the end, the boycott didn't happen and at Mexico City, Smith broke his world record, running 19.83 seconds to take the gold with Carlos taking the bronze. That, of course, is Carlos on the third step of the podium. Born in Harlem, New York, to Cuban parents, Carlos had gone to East Texas University on an athletic scholarship before moving to San Jose State. He actually beat Smith in the US Olympic trials and broke his world record. But it wasn't recognized because his shoes were not accepted at the time. When their boycott didn't materialize, Carlos and Smith hoped to use the games as a platform to push for change. Their protest had been planned in the days beforehand, only Carlos had forgotten his gloves. That's why Carlos has his left fist raised and Smith his right. The suggestion to share Smith's gloves came from the silver medalist, Australian Peter Norman. Last year, I went with Nev Silito, our coach, out to Tally Ho Boys' home with a film of the 56 Olympics. And uh, seeing the Olympics again on telly, I got the bug again. <laughs> and that was it. That was Peter Norman after running 20.5 seconds in the Australian Championships in March 1968. It was nearly half a second better than he managed when winning his other four national titles or at the Commonwealth Games so he was far from a favourite. At Mexico City, Norman took another half a second off that time to storm home past a shocked Carlos to take the silver. Electronically timed at 20.06, his run has stood as an Australian record for over 50 years. His stunning performance was overshadowed by the drama that followed. But Norman was no mere bystander. Along with suggesting Smith and Carlos share gloves, Norman asked to borrow an Olympic Project for Human Rights badge so he could join their protest. Afterwards, Smith and Carlos were expelled from the Games after Brundage threatened to ban the entire US team if they were not punished. Norman faced a storm of criticism at home as well, but with time, his role has been recognised. At San Jose State University is a statue of Smith and Carlos, but not Norman. It was Norman himself who requested that, so visitors could take a stand against racism. When Norman died in 2006, Smith and Carlos were pallbearers at his funeral. The trio forever linked for their place in history. I think what we did as athletes uh, was identifiably corresponding to those who are in politics, using what we had to bring across a word of implementation. Their iconic protest continues to inspire athletes to push for change over half a century later.
Thanks for watching. For more great content on all the major stories in world sport, make sure you hit the subscribe button.